Hello, welcome to in and out of OutSystems, where I show you something cool and useful in OutSystems in five minutes. I'm Brian from Netlink Digital Solutions. Let's get started. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the power of site properties. Site properties are global variables that allow you to set configuration values within your OutSystems application. These can be useful for a multitude of reasons, but one of the biggest reasons is that you don't have to republish your OutSystems application when you want to change these values. This can just be done in Service Center. We're going to talk about how to implement some of these site properties, as well as some good examples of when and where to use them within your OutSystems application. First, we're going to take a look at how to create and utilize a site property. For this example, I am just using a template from OutSystems, and I'm going to modify the max records here. Let's say the customer didn't know how many records they wanted to see on the page, and we didn't want to have to go through all the publishing in order to change it. So first, we're going to go to our data tab. And down in our hierarchy here, we see we have the site properties folder. We can expand that, and we have some site properties that are generated automatically by OutSystems. We're going to right-click our Site Properties folder, and we're going to click Add Site Property. From here, we can name it. I'm going to name this Requests Max Records. And I'm going to make sure its data type is set to an integer. Now that we've created our site property, we can actually utilize it within our screen. So I'm going to go back to my interface tab, and then I'm going to look at the aggregate that is filling this table here, our get requests. So I click on our get request, and we can see that we have our max records property set here. If we look at this variable, it is set to a default value of 10, Okay, so we'll have to remember that. Uh, clicking on our get requests, we can change this max records now to the site property variable. So let's go ahead and go down to our site here. When we see that we have our request max record site property that we had just created. And we can go ahead and double click that. And we can see it's called site.requestsmaxrecords. Okay. Once that's done, we can go ahead and click done. And we can go back to our data tab click back on our site property and we saw that the old max records variable that we were using had that default value of 10. So we're going to put a default value of 10 in here as well. After that's been all done, we've created our site property. We've linked it to this particular table and then we gave it a default value of the max records um, that was created originally. Go ahead and publish this application and then we're going to open it up in our web browser and we're going to see how it looks. Once we open our browser in the window, we can see that our list or our table is limited to the 10 records that we set in our site property. Now let's say the end user or the product owner wants to see more than 10 records. We don't have to go back into Service Studio in order to perform this action. We can actually utilize our Service Center. Real quick, the easiest way I find to get into the Service Center is to go back to the OutSystems Service Studio and click our little gear icon in the top corner. Once we are in the service center, we need to ensure that we are in the particular module that we are working in. From there, we can go down and one of our tabs is actually called Site Properties. So if we click on that tab, it will load the site properties from this module, and we can see that we have our request max records here. It's a data type of an integer and has the effective value of 10, which is what we set the default value to within our uh, service center. From here, we can actually click on this particular site property, and we can change its effective value to something greater than 10, less than 10, however we want to make it for the end user or the product owner. After we click our effective value, or after we enter our effective value, we can click the Apply button. Once we click the apply button, it will apply that new default or effective value to that site property. So if we just go right back to our dashboard and just refresh this page, we'll see now that we're actually getting 20 records. Right? And by changing that site property within our service center, we can have that reflect on our pages without having to publish again. 
Another very valuable use for site properties is the ability to assign a different effective value in each different environment. Let's say you have a development, a test, and a production environment. You can set a different effective value for each one of those environments across the same site property. This can be great for turning features on and off in different environments, or maybe by utilizing a different connection string across different environments. This has been an episode on the power of site properties. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any new content. Thanks for watching.